you join me jumping off of 195 113 to platform 7 at York. Today, we're going around to the National Rail Museum. Yes, hello boys, girls, and all in between. My name is Lisa Michaela, and welcome to a rather different vlog. Today I'm going to be going around the National Rail Museum because uh, me and G we're having a discussion the other day about how uh, I've not been seeing a Raymond in about two years, three years, no. Yeah, three yeah, or four years. Did we discuss this because I do not remember? <laughs> not even that, no, it's been like six years since I last went. Oh, and then I G went was... a couple of years ago. Yeah, 2020. So G was saying how she'd been yeah. 20. You showed me a picture before. Oh yeah, I did. <laughs> So me and Angie decided we were going to do it together and today we'll be taking you around there and we'll be finishing the vlog off with my favourite locomotive ever built, right at the end. Let's go! I do want to point out that, well, you're not short of food and drink places to start with. The main concourse here is full of them, but it also features a very unique thing, and that is that the old signal box here at York has become the only, or became a Costa, but it is the world's only blue Costa. Um, many people already know this, but all costs sort of that purpley red colour that they use. However, the Costa here was given a blue tone to match the previously uh, blue colour that was already carried on the signal box. Just a little weird nerdy fact about York for you though. But anyway, once you come up the stairs, you'll notice signage clearly marking you towards the main exit here on platform number three. Um, however, you can also find signage at the very bottom and if you turn the opposite way for the alternative exit, which leads you straight to the National Railway Museum. Let's head there now. So as you're coming out of York, you come down this side path from the other end of the footbridge and follow it round to the National Railway Museum. they've changed the layout with this new entrance uh, layout uh, concept where they've moved the entrance you now come straight into the main area where all the trains are kept I'm really hoping Mallard's not been moved because if it has I'm gonna be very upset but that is the train we're here for at the end um, but I've noticed also that I've gone from never really covering heritage stuff properly on the vlogs time of the channel to doing it twice in a month's worth of filming Maybe I'll do more of it and see how you guys think of it. Um, but there's some great stuff here. You've got plenty of steam locos, you've got a class 31. Uh, there's this brilliant, um, is that a 40 I think? It looks like a 40 to me, it could be a 37. They always look really similar. But there's one of those on an old turntable as well. It's just great. Let's look for Mallard. around the turntable you actually hit the point where you also get some um, stock from away from the UK uh, as well as uh, one of the preserved class 373 uh, Eurostar cab cars but I think what we're gonna do me and G are both gonna do is have a go I've only done it myself before but I'm gonna do it again jump on board this bullet train uh, carriage because you can sit there as if you're on the bullet train in Japan the old one the old like ones they don't use anymore but yeah uh, it's just really cool I'll show you guys around So we're just checking this ourselves. This is an O series, a zero series. It was the first ones that entered service on the Shinkansen or the bullet train network. So Shinkansen does directly translate colloquially into English as bullet train. Um, and these were the first ones used. And you can definitely feel the more retro sort of 60s feel of this interior. It's a lovely train. Um, lovely. It's kind of depressing though, isn't it? This is what? nicer. What? This is nicer than modern. <laughs> it's nicer. It's nicer than modern British high-speed trains right now. I'd rather this. I know why you like it. 
I'd rather this than an LAT 300 Like an Azuma on LNI. Maybe there's a few this. plug sockets and perfect. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. It's just have plug sockets. We could have this today. I know. It's nice. It is. It's very wide. Yeah, very. very wide? I think they have a wider gauge in Japan. Oh, okay. It <laughs> might do. Might be why. But yeah, so lovely trains and a great interior. Also, as you're leaving, do mind your head because the exit is really low. Seriously, watch your head. saw this specific locomotive it was in service for GWR this is of course 43002 which was painted in 20 was it 17 18 into the InCity 125 livery and named so Kenneth French it would have been 2017 because I saw it in Reading in 2017 I remember that actually um, so it was repainted in 2017 into this livery um, and because it was repainted so perfectly and was named Sir Kenneth Grange when GBR pulled these out of service the NRM bought 43002 and brought it into the National Collection which brings me on nicely to what the National Collection is so the National Collection is owned by the National Rail Museum and it's essentially a collection of preserved trains which are officially deemed like you know national heritage so all of the trains here that you see they are part of the National Collection which is interesting so that means that that Eurostar is but also that the bullet train carriages which is pretty interesting but I think it's time to find it, you guys, to my favourite locomotive, assuming it's still here. Yes, LNER A4 class number 4468, known as Mallard. This is the record-breaking steam locomotive. So this train um, held the record for the fastest speed of any steam locomotive in the UK. It still holds that record today, as no steam locomotive has ever gone faster than it. And for me, this train has a very unique, special story behind it. So the reason this is my favourite is because my granddad has always been a bit of a painting kind of person. He does always put, do paintings, do little drawings, and he put them up in the house. So the house is pretty much all his drawings, all like pictures, but there was a lot of his drawings about. And one of them that was stuck with me as a kid, and it was kind of the reason I fell in love with trains, is one they had over their door into their lounge, their like, back room, which was a beautiful painting of Mallard on its high-speed run. That painting sort of stuck with me throughout my life. Like I just remember seeing it all the time, and they kept it up for years, um, and quite uh, lovely in a nice way. A guy that actually uh, gave me that painting um, for a birthday present recently, which was amazing. Um, and it's just a beautiful locomotive. It's by far the most beautiful class of train the UK's ever built. It represents a time when British engineering was more deemed uh, reliable and, you know, the best you could get. Whereas today that normally goes to the Germans or the Japanese. Um, but yeah, so it really represents a beautiful time in British history and it is still one of the most beautiful locomotives ever built. So this has been removed for a display to be used. Let me show you guys what they replaced it with. Why? I like it. Is it your favourite exhibit? I think it might be, though. I like that. This is quite a cool one because I've been to Houston a lot, so I've walked up this. But I don't know when this is from because this hasn't changed much. I know that much. It looks like it's based on the original design in the 60s. But of course now, they're taking all this down, so this is gone, that's gone, this is going to be going. And there's going to be like new arches and stuff, and then the new HS2 platforms are over here. So that all this road's going as well here, so quite cool to look at that in sort of preservation of what it was in the 60s compared to what it's going to be like in about 10 to 15 years. 
but a lot of that's already gone already. There's like the taxi rank is here now as well, so it's, it's already changed quite a lot from this, uh, even today. Again, interesting one. So the 93, which is what this is, is now a new class of train. However, the original concept was this, as you can see. This was going to be uh, the other train that would join the 91s. Of course, we ended up getting the 91, and this never existed, but very pretty. One more thing with the commentary in the background. We did have a Woodhead locomotive in the main room, but here it appears to be a scale model of part of the Woodhead line, because that is a Woodhead locomotive by the looks of it. I could be wrong, but it does look like it. I want to mention the Woodhead line, because I do have a couple of big fans of the, wood of the line that follow my channel. Quite a few, actually. A line that we should really, really see open back up. Okay, aluminium carriage section, 1993. Let's see if we can figure out where it's from. There, there's a bit of a clue. I don't know if you guys can figure it out. So it's Network Southeast colours. We go down. Hmm. No, you know, I think it, I definitely think it's from a class 37. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they totally had carriages, those. Yeah. Class 37 is not a networker at all. As the road train, I think it's about to pull away, but it's fine. As the road train is sat there ready to take some people back into the town centre, we're going to be walking to the station where we're heading off now. Um, thank you very much for watching this rather short but sweet vlog from the National Rail Museum. Just wanted to vlog it because I wanted to give some people a chance to see it if they haven't got the money or the ability to get this far. Um, you know, it's something that you might want to come and do in the future, and so I thought I'd give you guys a bit of a look around um, and show you guys my favourite locomotive ever made, which is Mallard. Um, obviously if you do come here and you want to come into the town centre you can use said road train which is about to go past us in fact. Thank you to G for joining me today. No worries. And inviting me actually. So technically I joined her. <laughs> yeah. She invited me so I joined her. Not the point. Thank you for being in the vlog and uh, thank you guys very much for watching as I just said. If you have enjoyed today don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and if you do subscribe to the notification bells check out all my social links down below and of course thank you to my Patreons and members uh, for uh, your support. And shout out to my super fans Ian R, Colin Barrow and Andrew Meadows over on Patreon, the link to that is down below. Or if you want to you can join our first and only channel member of 4 b 37 by clicking the join button next to the subscribe button when you click that. And when you do subscribe, remember to turn on the notification bells. I've been Lucy McKenna, this has been the National Rail Museum. Goodbye for now. You showed me a picture before. Oh yeah, I did. And she said how she'd not been in a while as well, so we both I was having decided. to stand on my tip toes, yeah. And we decided we were <laughs> And so... And so we... <laughs> they're, they're doing that purposely. Did you have to announce all the coaches, really? No. No. That's odd. Can you shut up? He's going through the whole carriages again. I've got a, my arms hurting. So me and G decided we were going to do it together, and today we'll be taking you around there and finishing the video off with my favourite exhibit for Bruh. But this road will be here for the whole two hours. <laughs> My arm hurts.
like me. I don't know what I mean. There you go. And we'll be finishing the vlog off with my favorite.